fucking do. But why we do is not what people think. So when you have an active war zone, specifically the area of the world that I'm talking about in the Middle East, anything within 27 to 30 miles of ground troops gets fired upon. That's it. But I was exposed to documents that tell me a little bit more precisely how you choose what to fire upon. And what you fire upon is anything that appears that it could have a payload. Really? Yeah, because it would be a threat. What do they do with, like, the cubes surrounded by this, these spheres? Fucking nothing. Because they don't look like they have a payload. So they disregard. They're not part of the mission. So my point in saying that, kind of on the news, I don't need to prove to anybody it's true. It is true. I, am, I speak with people that are there right now. It is true. And there's been such an increased frequency since 2021 that it has been pushed up to kind of like critical where they're like, okay, these things are in our airspace. We could have collisions. But more importantly, like we see other countries firing on these. Russia, Syria. We know it's not their assets. So the question is, Whose are these? So when you say firing at these, so... Hellfire missiles. Right. So you have this thing, and yeah. what shape are these ones that have payloads? Okay, well, that's, that's what's crazy. So I, I do, I have images of one that we fired on, and for... Can you show us the image? Um, I'll show you. I'll show okay. you. Yeah. Show me right now. <laughs> I'll show you. I'll show you, but I think... I think you it's, can't show it publicly yet? I don't know, because it, it comes from... Because it comes from a document I probably shouldn't have seen, but you know, people send things to me in ways that I can look at them. So okay. anyway, let's talk about that later. So okay, it looks so like this, this. Looks like a fucking jellyfish, man. Like a jellyfish. Yeah, I don't know. It, it, you know, it's stiff, but that you know, about the size of like a big coffee table. That's the one at least that we've that we've fired on recently. Big coffee like this desk, maybe? Yeah. About okay. ten to twelve feet. And then it looks domed. And then it has like, and they're not all like this, but this is the one we're talking about that I know was recently fired upon. And what do they think it's made out of? See, that's the whole thing, man. Is it like metallic? That, that's the whole thing. There's no retrieval program that's known in, in these war zones. So even if they did hit something, like, first of all, would they be able to take it down, whatever it is, right? And right. by the way, we're eliminating that these are balloons, you know, drug smugglers who use mm -hmm. balloons and shit like that. Th these are these are objects that uh, have controlled flight. So, you know, back in the day with the Foo Fighters, this is not a new phenomenon, right? Back in the, the day with the Foo Fighters, people need to understand that it's not just a band, the Foo Fighters. Oh, yeah, 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 yeah. No, man. Uh, so World War II, you know, you had these both sides of the war, you know, all sides seeing these metallic spheres outpacing their planes, and they're like, oh fuck. They're up to something. They got some cool technology. The problem is we find out both sides think it's, you know, the other sides. Right. This has been happening for so long. I have an article. We can pull this up. I got an article from 1960. Talks about a, a cube with a, with, a loom, with a sphere around it. A fighter pilot, military fighter pilot, for four days, they were getting these. It was in the Alamogordo newspaper. So I'm just saying that this That's, is not... Is that New Mexico? Yeah, Alamogordo. Yeah, it's... I think that's, you know, an interesting area. Yeah. And so these Foo Fighters, yeah. the, these uh, was were both sides reporting the same yes. like sort of formations and the same speed? We, we thought it was their technology. Right. They thought it was ours. What's happening right now in the Middle East with the same UF? Same thing? Yeah, because we're seeing Russians and Syrians fire on these, and we're sometimes firing on them. But whose are they? When you say we're seeing, so is this we're like seeing. reports from soldiers that you're getting? Like yeah. Where, where are you getting this information? Okay, so people that work in these, um, people that work in collecting this data are a little bit frustrated. And why, you know, that's why I want to become unnecessary. Why do they come to me, right? And I think they're, they're frustrated that they, don't, that they don't have a way to put it up through the chain of command. That, they, mm. that it gets lost in translation. Or they just suppress it. They don't even spend, I don't even think it's nefarious, they just don't spend the gas to go look at something that doesn't, it's not part of the mission. Right. There's no proactive UFO kind of like discovery process. It's all kind of reactive. That's one of the weirdest things about Commander David Fravor's account was that when he was talking about uh, being uh, in radio communication with the Nimitz and they were saying, we see these things every day. 
And he was like, what the fuck are you talking about? Well, yeah. You see this every day? You see these 